<coughs> Will I ever play the guitar again, Doc? I have done everything I possibly can, Jacob. It's all up to Lisa now. Where is that girl? I came as quickly as I could. What's wrong with Jake? I'm afraid Jake has cancer. But it can't be. I know, it's so sudden. I wouldn't be surprised if my old nemesis, Dr. Neville, was behind this, the fiend. But how can we help Jake now? That's where we need you. Me? What am I supposed to do? You're going on a little voyage inside Jacob's body. Ew, you can't mean that. But surely that's not possible. Oh, but it is. First you will climb aboard the probulator here, then I will zap you with my shrinking ray, the shrinkulator, until you're within the diameter of a human blood cell. Then I suppose you'll inject me into Jake using the injectulator. No, no, a common syringe will do just fine. Right, Professor. <sighs> Come on, Lisa. What? I've told you better than that. Our bodies are made up of millions of proteins and cells. How is a person supposed to operate at the size of a single protein molecule? This isn't a science fiction film, you know. Okay, Prof. What's the real plan? Please tell me you've got one. Yes, of course. We must attack the cancer cells in Jake's body at a molecular level by delivering cancer-killing molecules to the site of the cancer. Okay, so we inject these cancer-killing molecules straight into his arm? Good heavens, no. These molecules are highly toxic. They would do terrible damage to his healthy cells. Therefore, we must deliver the molecules to the site of the cancer using nanoscopic carrier structures called vesicles. These spherical structures possess compartments in which other molecules can be safely wrapped up and transported, and can even have tails attached to them to propel them through the bloodstream. So we just inject these into Jake's arm and they'll know where to go? I'm afraid it's not that simple. We'll need you to select a vesicle and then guide it through the bloodstream using our simulation terminal. Sounds like fun. What are we waiting for? Hold your horses. There are additional complications. You must avoid collision with any particles in the bloodstream, as even the blood cells can damage the vesicle. And it's crucial that you avoid detection by Jake's immune system too. Otherwise the vesicles will be engulfed by white blood cells and all will be lost. How do we do that? The white blood cells are attracted to build-up of antibody proteins. If the vesicle comes into contact with one of these, it may get stuck to it. There is one precaution we can take to combat this. Vesicles can be given a hairy coat of polyethylene glycol molecules. These help to shield it from absorbing antibody proteins. Okay, but which vesicles do we choose? Good question. Longer hairs make the vesicle more stealthy. They also make it slower and more prone to breaking up. Vesicles with shorter hairs are faster and more stable, but less able to remain undetected by the immune system, because proteins get stuck to them so easily. The choice is yours. Select one, and we'll see how it fares. <laughs>